Today, I'm here in a shop to pick a good French wine, and I've done a ton of research to make sure that I know what I'm doing. I went to the City du Vent in Bordeaux to educate myself, and I even spent an evening with a world champion sommelier in my quest to be able to make a good, intelligent choice when I'm in a place like this. So in this video, I'm going to explain five major types of wine in France, and we'll have a wine tasting in one of my favorite wine bars in Paris, so in the end, you'll know exactly what to buy to impress your friends. Allez, on y va. For all of my years in the US, if I was ordering wine, I would say, give me a Cabernet, give me a Chardonnay, basic red and white, because that's what I knew. But when I moved to France, that's not how it shows up on menus and in stores. Here, they would ask, do you want a Bordeaux or a Côte de Rhone? Or they would say, do you want a Chateau Neuf de Pop or a saint Emilion? And I didn't know what they were talking about. It was so confusing and intimidating, I almost didn't want to drink. And let's face it, I'm not looking to be a sommelier. I just want to know enough to order something that I know I'm going to like. So today we're going to cover five major wine regions in France so that whether you're in a restaurant or buying a bottle, you can make your choices with confidence. So let's talk about one of my favorites, Champagne. Now I know that people often just go for the old standbys because they know the names like Dom Perignon or Veuve Clicquot, but there are tons of amazing Champagnes here in France. So now let's go to Vino Sapiens Wine Bar in Paris with Vincent and some of our friends visiting from the US to do a tasting. French typically will have that as an aperitif, which is your first drink. And then we'll have that a lot with oysters and a seafood platter. Yeah. And then we'll have that, of course, with dessert and chocolate. Oh. So Vincent, I know I like to drink champagne, but show me the right way and what I should feel or smell or show me how to do this. This is the first sensation you have, okay? <laughs> and then you can, that's... <laughs> Sometimes the bubbles tickle you, you know. But we haven't <laughs> drank yet in your party, tipsy. <laughs> This gold, this gold color. You see the difference between the colors, between the tables and the white paper. You have some lemon and grapefruit influence, some citrus family influence. So now we drink it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course, champagne comes from the Champagne region, which is not very far from Paris. It makes a great day trip or a quick overnight visit. So we recommend going to see some. So now let's go back to the store and Antoine, show us some good champagne. Okay, so for champagne, it's actually very easy. And you'll find those champagne in all the stores in France. And this one actually is 20 bucks. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a good French bottle of champagne. If it says Brut and it says champagne on it, that's probably a good choice. And then you have a champagne like this one. And this one actually says Pinot Meunier. And this is 25 bucks. And again, this is gonna be amazing. Here's another bottle, which actually this one is 40 bucks. And it's the same thing. It says champagne, it says brut. And again, a $40 bottle of champagne here, Ayala. This is an amazing quality champagne. Now let's talk about wines from Burgundy. Cause before I moved here, Burgundy sounded like a heavy wine that I didn't think I wanted to try. And now, it's my go-to region if I'm looking for something that's light and easy that will please anyone at the table. This is home to the Pinot Noir grapes that are light and fruity. So let's go back to Vino Sapiens and try that with our friends. But I think this one goes great with a charcuterie. Oh yeah, of course. Charcuterie and cheese, no question. I talk to a lot of French people and they all tell me that they're intimidated by choosing wine oh, too. Oh yeah, even my son. Yeah. My son says, I have a wine card in a restaurant. He don't know what to choose. So be comfortable. You as an mm -hmm. American that when you open a wine card, you are just like, mm -hmm. you have to know that all the French people are almost the same. So when it comes to choosing a red wine, if you're not complicated, if you're not a big connoisseur and you want a good safe choice, the Pinot Noir is light, it's gentle, it's easy, it goes with everything. Can't go wrong with a Pinot Noir. Now, if you want to experience a wine tasting just like this one, there's a link in the description below. Just click on it, see if it's a good fit for you. And now, back to the wine tasting. So Antoine, 
Show us some stuff from Burgundy. Now, Burgundy wine, those are my favorite. I love those wines because they're so easy to drink. They're fruity. They're like, you can't go wrong with a Bourgogne Pinot Noir. And this goes for the whopping price of nine euros here in France. It's an amazing wine. You see this wine, grab it. You're going to love it. Now, if you want to treat yourself when it comes to Burgundy, a Pomar is the way to go. This bottle is 41 euros here in Paris. If you see that in the store or if you see that on the menu, now you are going up in price, but you also going up in quality. This is an amazing wine. Now, if you come with this bottle to my house, you'll get invited again. Now, if you're more of a white wine person, in Burgundy, Pouilly Fuissé is mwah. This is an amazing wine. Now, actually, it's not that expensive. It's about 20 euros, but this is a great wine. It goes with just about everything, aperitif or fish or chicken or pork. That is a great wine. Pouilly Fuissé. Thanks, Antoine, because this is exactly what I'm looking for if I'm just sitting down to have a glass of wine with a friend, with a charcuterie board, with some chicken or some pork, and it's especially good with a beef bourguignon. Now let's talk about some white wines, and some of the most amazing white wines come from the Loire Valley. And the Loire Valley has amazing castles and fabulous things to do, but it's also home to one of my favorite whites, the Sancerre. Let's go back to Vino Sapiens and try those with our friends. Karen likes it, look at that you smile. Tell. Oh yes. So far, I like the Loire Valley very yes. well. This is really delicate. I, I love the, the uh, citrus notes in it. I get a little floral sort of mm -hmm. uh, experience too with this. It's very, uh, very complicated and lovely. It's like complicated and simple at the same time. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's really easy to drink. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not fair. Oh, love you. <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, two glasses of wine. Look at them too. I like this. <laughs> so let's go back to the store and Antoine, show us some bottles. So now we're in the Loire Valley and the Loire Valley has amazing white wines in France, specifically the Sancerre. You will see that in just about every store in every restaurant. This is a great white wine. Goes great with chicken, with pork, with fish. Loire Valley has a lot of seafood. This is a very nice wine. And this bottle here is 17 euros. Not that expensive and it's a great wine. I love Sancerre. Now, a wine that sounds very similar to what you have in Burgundy, it's Pouilly Fumé. And that's another amazing white wine from the Loire Valley. And this one is 17 euros. Again, not a fortune but an amazing wine. And from the Loire Valley, you also have the Saumur, which is a great red wine. Super easy to drink. This one is literally seven euros. It's oftentimes served sort of chilled. This is great wine to drink in the summer with a little salad and everything. That's a great wine. So this is the kind of wine that you would have with an aperitif, with some cheese, and absolutely amazing with seafood. Now let's talk about rosé wines, and specifically the Côte de Provence rosé. Now, in the US, I never drank rosé. It gave me a headache and a bad taste in my mouth. But Antoine insisted that I try it here and convinced me it would be different, and he was right. And in fact, I love it. Like when we were in Campugé down in Provence, I fell in love with Côte de Provence rosé. So now let's go back to Vino Sapiens and see what our friends think about the Côte de Provence. So this is a rosé and it's from the Côte de Provence. And where is Côte de Provence? Uh, it's down there. <laughs> <laughs> the Côte de Provence. <laughs> you know what? I love you. <laughs> Thank you. And this is Provence. Provence, this is the French Riviera. This is very, very, very famous in France, mm -hmm. especially on the summertime, when okay. you're doing salad, barbecue. When the weather is very hot, mm -hmm. we're doing very fresh rosé. You see the color of your wine? It's dry, it's sweet, it's complex, it's like everything all together. It's just, um, it's different than anything I find in the U.S. What do you think, Charlie? I've had great rosé in France and nothing in the U.S. that quite matches it. Yeah. I know what I smell, a uh, Côte de Provence, I, I can hear the crickets. I think a lot of people, especially a lot of men in the U.S., would not go to a rosé because it's kind of like that frou-frou drink. It's, it's not. Drink. It's not. A rosé is a, It's actually a great one for an aperitif. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, when you're in France, try a rosé. It's not a frou-frou wine. It's got a lot of flavor. Uh, it's a very nice wine. Goes great with a salad, especially if you're going to be here in the summer. Try a good Côte de Provence rosé. Telling you.
This is what real men in the South drink. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a Steelers barbecue. Have yourself a Côte de Provence. <laughs> Be a real man. Forget Bud Light, Coors Light. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just swirl your glass like this, give it a good woof, and then chug it down. <laughs> oh, you are so yes. Awesome. Go birds! Go birds! Antoine, take us back to the store and show us some bottles. So for Rosé Côte de Provence, uh, you have few choices, but what is great with Rosés is you'll spend about 12 to 15 bucks for a very nice bottle. Of course, you have the Brad Pitt Rosé wine, which is the Miraval, and this one goes for 19 bucks, so that's actually fairly affordable, and it's actually good. But then you'll find a Chateau Saint-Maur Côte de Provence, that one goes for 16 bucks, so actually really decent wine. Or another uh, Côte de Provence like this one for nine bucks, this is a great Côte de Provence. The good thing with Côte de Provence, you don't have to spend a fortune and those wines are great for a barbecue or for aperitif. It's actually fairly easy. It has to say Côte de Provence on the label. If it doesn't say Côte de Provence, well, then it's another rosé from another region because there's rosé from everywhere. But the Côte de Provence is actually very specific and it says that on the label. And now let's talk about Bordeaux. I didn't know until we moved here that if I ordered a Cabernet or a Merlot, I was actually getting a Bordeaux because Bordeaux is the region that those come from. These are full-bodied, oaky wines with hints of red fruits and dark currants, and they're best served with red meats and you know, heavy or more complex kinds of meals with sauces and things like that. Now, let's go back to the tasting and see what our friends think about the Bordeaux. We see the color, we appreciate the color. It's a lot darker than the Very Pinot Noir. Darker, oh yeah, more powerful. Ooh. Oh, this mm. is so powerful. There's a lot of flavor in Wonder. there. Here's the All right. One. Now, Antoine, show us some Bordeaux. Now for Bordeaux, of course, it's a huge region that produces millions of bottles, so there's a lot to choose from. But I think if you go with a Saint-Emilion, it's a safe bet that you're going to get a good bottle of wine. This one goes for 40 bucks. Saint-Emilion wine, if you're going to have a heavy meat or something in sauce that is just very flavorful, a Bordeaux goes great with that. Now another Bordeaux that I personally like is Saint-Estèphe. This is a great wine. And this one is 28 bucks. Again, this is a, a very flavorful, Full, full body wine thing. If you're gonna have a steak au poivre, Saint Estef, that's great. And here you have a Chateau Couraz, a 2015 Fonsac, which goes for 15 euros. So it's not a fortune. So not a actually appellation. It's not a name wine like Saint Estef or Saint Emilion. It's just a run of the mill Bordeaux. For 15 bucks, you get yourself a nice bottle here. Bordeaux are usually a little bit more expensive, but you can find yourself a decent bottle of Bordeaux for 15 to 20 euros. If you like what you saw here, next I would watch this video about all the aperitifs and cocktails to try in France.